Hello and welcome back to my channel. I make videos on illustration and today I'm going to be showing you how I make my digital illustration from start to finish and what tools I use to get there. So this is going to be a fairly quick video just outlining how I make my work. And if you want to see what my work looks like and you've not seen any of my videos before, I will try and dot some of my work around the screen here so you can see it and yeah, then I think we'll get started. <laughs> So the main tools I use for my work are Procreate, my iPad Pro and Photoshop. However, my old illustration was all done in Photoshop only, like that was my only tool. And some of the new work you'll see on my Instagram especially, like when there's like quick little pieces, sometimes they will be fully in, photo in Procreate. And also you can do amazing work in Procreate, I am just learning it slowly like I when I first started I only used Procreate for sketches and I did all my work on Photoshop and slowly that has blurred so much now quite a lot of my work process is on Procreate and honestly I could finish it on Procreate I'm just very emotionally attached to the textures I use on Photoshop and currently I can't get a similar effect on Procreate so that's the only reason why I use both you could easily just use one to make your artwork and obviously there are unlimited amount of ways you can make digital artwork. This is just my way and how I like to work. And if you ask me in a few years, it might be different because it's definitely different than it was a few years ago. So yeah. So this iPad Pro has changed everything for me. I can't remember which model it is as it was a gift, but it really has just completely changed the way I work. It is the one where the Apple Pencil charges at the bottom, but that's never bothered me in the slightest. And this pencil stays charged for days, it's amazing. I'm hardly ever charging it, and when I do charge it, it takes a few minutes. And even though I said this was a digital only thing, I do often do really rough sketches on paper. I just find it easier to jot them down as soon as I have the idea. And then I look for some references. Now I tend to get these from places like Pinterest or just photos I have myself. I take photographs like out and about and use those. But I always keep these on my phone or a different device just because it's easier to do this and it stops me from doing it too exact because if I have the photo on Procreate I tend to do it literally so similar to like a copy of the photo and one, I don't want to copy other people's photographs, and two, it just takes the creativity away from the work. The way I have found I like drawing portraits is where I really keep it to the minimal details as possible. So I do those little thumbnails you just saw, and they're really rough, I usually wouldn't share them with anybody, but it's just to make sure I know what kind of layout I'm going for, and for this one I wanted a head with like a swirly thing around her. When I start sketching onto Procreate, I tend to have four layers. I have one really rough layer with just the outline of where I want things. The next one, slightly more how the body will or face will look. And then the next one tends to be like the details starting to go in. And then I go in with black and I just have the sketch how I like it, if that makes any sense whatsoever. You can have a colour palette on Procreate that you keep there and you just use those colours. I'm, and this is probably a bad trait, but I love colour, I'm so excited by colour, I spend a lot of my time making colour palettes, might do a whole separate video on that, but I sometimes go back to my old work and pick colours I liked how they looked and I see how other ones look, so I spend quite a lot of time dabbling about in colours and seeing what I like. When I've decided on my colour palette I'll put blobs in the corner of the page and I will just use the picky uppy tool, I don't know what it's called, um, to get that colour and on Procreate what you do is you just put your finger down, hold it and then it chooses that exact colour so you can just go back to it like that. This is another reason why I love Procreate, it's just very, it feels very hands on and I like working that way. So now to add colour to my Procreate sketch, I must say if this was a commercial project I would have sent the rough off as a sketch, like just the black and white sketch, none of the other details and then only once that was approved and I'd made changes to that would I start this stage. I kind of do it as a drag and drop thing, but when I draw the actual thing over the top, so I have the sketch and then I go over the top of the sketch which was drawn in dry ink, the actual artwork will be drawn in studio pen because it gives me really clean lines. So I go over the top of my sketch when I'm happy with it in that and then I literally just drag and drop. So once I've got my colour palette, I just use my finger just to drop it in and try out different colours and I usually spend a long time on the stage just trying out what works. And then I share it to my iMac, and this is my favourite thing about Procreate, the fact you can click export, and you can export it as a full PSD. So then when it goes onto my computer, here it is, it is a layered file, I just airdrop that over, and it's a Photoshop file in the same dimensions. It is RGB, so I usually make a new one in CMYK if I'm sending this to print. 
but here is the file and all the layers are there just like they were on my iPad. And this is, like I said, one of my favourite things about using these two apps, they go together so well. And Photoshop does just have a few more options at the moment. I think Focus will get there in time, but there's just a few options and sizing restrictions and all of that. And that is also obviously down to the iPad, like years and years of time, I'm sure things will come out, technology will adapt like it always does. And soon probably we'll, I'll be able to do all of it on an iPad. But for now, I don't mind this. I quite like using this. Like I said, I use my texture brushes. So I go to each layer, I select it, and then sometimes I use a normal paintbrush just to lighten the layer slightly because I then choose the colour on the colour picker, darken it, and then I use my texture brush. Now the texture I use, I handmade with ink. So when I was at university, I got lots of ink down on a surface and some rollers, and I took photographs of just ink spooled all over the surface basically and I turned these into texture brushes that I use to this day so I don't really make brushes so much anymore but I made these and I'm really happy with them and I would recommend to anybody to make your own texture brushes like if you have anything so if you want watercolour do some watercolour sketches make your own texture brush I have got a video on how to make these so I'll link that in the description but I would really recommend to do that because it adds a personal touch to your work but if you're interested in making something similar this was literally just acrylic paint I think it was, I don't even think it was ink, I think it was acrylic paint with a roller on paper. And then I just took a photo and made it into a texture brush. I do tend to go back and tweak it if it's on a face because my texture does have like lines and stuff in it, which can look fine in other work and I quite like it, but with faces it looks a bit weird. So I do these tweaks and then I just go through adding each section, making sure it's textured, neatening up areas where they're needed to, and playing around with saturation and layer order and usually if I'm working on a much more complicated reef this will take a lot longer because I'll be playing around with lots of different elements but this is quite a simple one and like I said I keep faces quite simple because I prefer how they look when I go over the top with lots of different things going on they just look over complicated to me and I'm never that happy with them one thing I do sometimes do in photoshop is add a little bit more shading so this girl she was looking a little bit um like she had a big bright light shining at her. So I just added a little bit of shading here via the pen tool on Photoshop. And in my other video where I show you my process, I use this a lot and I still do. But yeah, just to add a little bit more shading and give her face a bit of definition. And again, I just tweak these and that is that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try and have a look. And if you did like this video, I would really appreciate it if you leave a thumbs up and subscribe and join me along on this little YouTube journey of mine. And yeah, I will see you again if you choose to come along with me. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye guys.